we could be seeing RTX 4000 series cards in July. There's a couple of tweets here that have some absolutely huge information if they end up being true. Let's go ahead and take a look. So a couple of days ago on May 15th, uh, well, I guess that's one day ago. This was yesterday. <laughs> I can count days. Anyway, Copite7Kimi replied to one of his previous messages from almost a year ago, uh, updating the timeline for Ada Lovelace, where even a year ago, Ada Lovelace will come out a little bit earlier, keep patient. Now we're getting quarter three early. And there's even more updates than this, including performance and even more of exactly what early quarter three actually means. But like, guys, um, we were not expecting this until maybe September or so. This would be a huge timeline adjustment if it pans out. Now, should we believe this leak? Well, if you pay attention to the GPU rumor mill and leaks, because again, this is not officially from NVIDIA. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, Copite7Kimi is one of the most well-known leakers who has consistently got things right in the past, which is why it would make sense to listen to a random tweet like this, because obviously anybody in the world could just send out a random tweet. But when you get things right consistently over time, it makes us think maybe we should listen to you. Now, videocards.com reached out for some clarification on what exactly that time frame meant. So videocards.com said, ah yes, by the way, when you said quarter three early, you meant early quarter three, or as early as quarter three, meaning is this quarter three? And Kopai is not dancing around. Mid-July, mid-July, <laughs> that, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly blown away. I was not expecting to see next-gen cards in mid-July. Um, but not only that, Copite's dropping some more info today <laughs> with the actual expected performance of the RTX 4090. Now, to be clear, this is not specifically saying the 4090 will be the first card to drop. Notice that uh, the original tweet here um, that Copite was replying to was re just referring to Ada Lovelace, so this GPU architecture. Now, we would expect the 4090 probably to be one of the first, if not the first to come out, along with the 4080 and the 4070, if Nvidia follows what they usually do, and that's what we saw with Ampere, although again, those were like a September into October kind of launch dates, rather than in July, so this would be, again, uh, pretty early. Now, getting into the 4090 specs summary here, and posting this pretty confidently, it says, okay, RTX 4090 is the AD102300 uh, GPU. Now that's significant because the AD102 GPU is the top end GPU from, from this lineup, but there's gonna be cut down versions of it. And I'll get into why I think that, you know, the, the 4090 is gonna be a cut down version. They're definitely saving some room for a 4090 Ti because they're saying this will be 16,128 FP32, uh, 21 gigabits per second on the memory, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, and this is 450 watts. And the big deal, if those numbers mean nothing to you, is two times about, right, squiggly equals, <laughs> about two times the performance of an RTX 3090. Notice not two times the performance of an RTX 3090 Ti. Now, this is also gonna generate some, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed with RDNA 3, that's all. Okay, there is so much to unpack here. We've got to talk a little bit, but but don't tune out now. I've got so, I've got some info about the R AMD Ryzen 7000 coming up here as well. So so anyway, there's there's more to happen in the video. But l let me unpack this a little bit. First of all, some people might be wondering, what about the 600 watts we've been seeing as the rumored, um, you know, uh, power consumption for this GPU? Well, I think a lot of times people have been labeling the 8102 leaks as RTX 30, uh, sorry, 4090 leaks, but the 8102 GPU, like I said, is going to have cut down versions. So. I think it's very clear that there will be a 4090 Ti, and that's probably likely to be the 600 watt GPU that we've seen rumored, or possibly even go beyond it, right? 
it's looking like the 4090 itself will be 450 watts, which don't get me wrong, is already an insane amount of power draw, but that is at least similar to what we've seen with the 3090 Ti, and maybe the point of that card was just getting us used to that and also allowing board partners to um, do a practice run of trying to cool a GPU that draws this much power. The other reason why this is a most likely cut down and saving room for the, um, the 4090 Ti is the fact that we're seeing this as 16,128 CUDA cores, which is less than the previous, uh, previous rumor, um, which would have had 140 to 142 streaming multiprocessors. The 16,128 CUDA core um, number would come from 126 streaming multiprocessors. So again, it looks like they're saving a good amount of room here to bump up to a 4090 Ti model. And again, that's where I would expect to see that incre that crazy uh, 600 watt spec uh, coming in the future. Now, um, <laughs> guys, if we start getting new GPUs in July, then I really think anybody who's buying a high-end GPU right now might wanna hold off. Now, should you hold off on mid-range GPUs? I mean, I have a feeling that these are going to be priced pretty high. Like if we see the 4090, it's it's going to be high and it's going to sell out and it's going to be you know very expensive. So I think it will take longer to get the um, get the uh, you, know, you know more mid range type stuff out there. So I think buying mid range right now could still make sense as prices have come down. Um, but yeah, if we're about to get two times the 3090 performance in in July, then that's not too long to wait. Anyway, what about I am disappointed with RDNA 3? Well, that could mean a whole lot of things. Um, <laughs> but I mean, personally, it, it, it's, not, it's not the end of the world, make or break, who has the fastest gaming GPU. I think a lot more has to do with, you know, price to performance, and that could be everything. Although it also matters, I think where the, having the highest end GPU matters is mindshare. Uh, it is important that AMD, to continue to increase and grow market share, starts to be able to combat the idea that they're the, the cheap brand, they're the off brand, right? So um, I think if they're not able to compete at the high end with um, NVIDIA this time around, that would be disappointing. But if that meant that their highest end offering was still quite good, I mean, they can already do a 6900 XT, which is quite good performance. If they can beat that and price it right, um, I think it could still be fantastic for consumers. So I'm not sure what exactly Copite means with disappointed with RDNA 3. Is their multi-chip module design not um, maybe living up to the performance that they were hoping from the specs of it? Uh, are they having challenges like challenges with those designs? Is it is it not coming until later in the year? I mean, I don't know what exactly this means. Also, honestly, this is just more of a personal note. I'm always curious on these leakers, how much of this is actually just paid marketing, you know, from a company like NVIDIA. But that's a whole other note. I'm not necessarily saying I think Copite would be an actual NVIDIA employee, but like this information has to come from somewhere if it's accurate. And while I think some leaks could legitimately be from knowing somebody who works there or whatever, I really do think that, you know, obviously these massive companies know how to get free media coverage, like my video right now, um, by leaking out information, like rather than having to pay thousands, you know, or millions of dollars in marketing, they can get that value worth of marketing by leaking info and having people report on it for free. So I'm just saying, <laughs> there's a lot of things that that particular statement could mean, and we need more info before I think we need to get worried about what being disappointed in RDNA 3 means. Anyway, that's enough on that topic. Let's jump over to some other things. So I'm getting this from WCCF Tech, but they're saying that their reports are coming from two sources, both Red Gaming Tech here on YouTube and Zhang Zheng, I, I butchered that, I know, uh, Evaluation, which is apparently um, an online channel operated by Taobao, which is a leading retail outlet in the Asian market. Now, what is this info? Apparently, it's info about Zen 4, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to label this once again with rumors, grains of salt, all of the standard stuff, because they're suggesting that the 7950X could go up to 24 core uh, configuration. Whereas everything we've seen up to this point suggested that AMD was gonna stick to 16 cores 
on that top end model. Now, is it possible that they're feeling some pressure from Intel? and which will be having 24 uh, cores, although only 32 threads by having 16 E cores and eight P cores um, in, their up, in their Raptor Lake CPUs. I mean, it's possible. I still have my doubts here because if they were gonna do this, you would need to add in another chiplet, which to me just seems like from a design standpoint that that's not the kind of thing that you could just throw in at the last minute. Um, kind of unexpectedly, but again, I'm not a uh, you know CPU engineer, so maybe I'm wrong about the difficulties of doing that. So I'm gonna just use that to say I'm gonna take all of these leaks with, with a a heavy pinch of I you know salt is overused. Let's just say I'm not sure about this, but they're saying up to 24 cores possible and 5.4 gigahertz, and we are that is lining up with clock speed increases that we've been seeing reported from other outlets. Now. They're also saying that the 7900X could be 12 core, um, which is normal, that, that's standard, right? We, we already had the uh, um, 12 core uh, 5900X, and this could go up to 5.3 gigahertz. But we're seeing pricing increases on all of these as well, and I will jump down to that in a second with a summary of all this. So. Um, it's looking like the 800 line being eight core and the 7600X being six core, again, looks standard. But um, there was some speculation here that the if the, um, if the 7950X did pop up to the 24 thread variant, that we could see the 7900X actually be the 16 core version. But then with uh, the eight core and six core versions for the 800 and 600X, um, be go untouched. Again, I think the clock speed increases all seem reasonable. One thing I'm disappointed to see here is all of these seem to have a price hike from the previous generation, which was already pretty expensive compared to their generations before that. Um, so yay, more money for things. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I, I'm very curious to see if that pans out to be anything. And this pricing I think is too high. I do not want to see a $500 7800X. So hopefully, some I don't know, hopefully at least the pricing part of that rumor doesn't pan out, we'll see. Now speaking of pricing, maybe this could have something to do with it. We're seeing that TSMC and Samsung are rumored to be uh, considering price hikes. Now to be clear in this headline, the 20% is referring to Samsung, but of course the headline is going to use the biggest number. TSMC uh, seems to be considering an 8% price hike. Uh, but again, uh, none of this is, is super official. This is coming from um, computer base, and that seems to be mostly speculation based on the fact that some key component costs have increased, especially due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine um, and what that means for like neon gas production and other materials, and that if this continues, they may have to raise prices or at least have an excuse to raise prices. And um, also speaking of chip prices and um, demand and prices normalizing, apparently Asus is saying that crypto demand has basically dried up, but gaming demand has stayed strong, so that could take time for pricing to normalize and for them to catch up with demand. Now, is that just due to how things are currently, or do they know something about this rumored you know, mid-July launch of a new generation of GPUs, because that certainly would spike demand back up, probably before the previous gen pricing did normalize. So interesting. Now, last little bit I've got for you today is that Intel did release a new ARC graphics, and I know most of you don't care about that because nobody owns an ARC GPU, but what was kind of interesting in that was that um, buried in a new beta driver, is a list of um, unannounced desktop graphic card models. And it looks like the ones that ended up being listed in here were A770, A750. So the A7 is kind of like an i7 on the CPU side. Those are their top end uh, chips with the 70 obviously being the higher end version than the 50 version. Then you have your mid-range A5, which is kind of like your i5, right? Mid-range target with an A580. Then you have your A3, kind of like your i3 CPUs with an A380 and an A310. Now, there had been rumors of a possible A780 or A350 on desktop, but that is not showing up in this driver. 
So that doesn't mean it won't happen, but you know, it does bring some question marks to that, that uh, topic. And we're also seeing the Arc Pro A40 and A50 and A30M for laptops in here as well, which are workstation style laptop stuff that has not yet been released. So, hey, maybe someday uh, Intel will get their stuff out here. But at this point, uh, how about we leave this in the comment sections? Uh, are, you guys wanna bet on whether we'll see uh, RTX 4000 series before we see desktop Intel GPUs? That's an interesting question, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.